nothing. Do nothing. Anybody want to learn how to do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Of course you do. So even with low money offers, I average 60% of market value in this market. Everywhere in the United States. Some, sometimes better. Okay? Because it's the way I do this. Oh, what's a honey badger? Everybody, somebody came up to me and said, Cliff, you're the honey badger of real estate. I'm like, what the hell's a honey badger? That. That's a honey badger. You ever watch the video of the honey badger? Okay. Type, not right now, but just write this down. R-A-N-D-A-L-L. -L. Randall, honey badger. It's got some language in it. So if you're a snowflake and you're going to melt, right? Uh, it probably wouldn't be for you, but it's funny. And, it, and it's a guy that does a, a voiceover, a comedic voiceover of a National Geographic video of a honey badger. And, and it's funny. It really is. But they're thick skinned, they're super smart, they're persistent. I didn't know I was doing it wrong, so I just did it over and over and over and over and over until they realized I was doing it right. Because it works. And, oh, they take what they want. And they don't give a shit. Can I say that word? Yeah. No shit. <laughs> Right, so who wants to be a honey badger? Mm. <laughs> all right, all right. Anybody want a copy of this presentation? Okay. All you have to do is get your phone out. See, I, I was watching you when you did that. And, and I just made this right there while you were, I was sitting in the back of the room. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but what you want to do is you want to type the word honey badger. It's one word. Your phone's going to try to make it two. So make sure you don't let autocorrect take over. And you're going to text it to the number 234-231-0007. So does anybody not know how to do that? That's a different number than what's in the top screen. It says 0777. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There might be a typo there. Uh-oh. 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 I believe that's the correct number right there. Zero, it is 0777. Look at you. You found an error. You get, you get a gold star. I did drop out of school in ninth grade. I was his teacher. Um, it is. It's 0777 because it's lucky number sevens and triple sevens, and that's why I picked the number. That's funny. I guess I was on a James Bond thing over here. So ignore that number and text it to 0777. And Jake, please remind me to fix that. All right, everybody got that? So what's going to happen, it's going to say, hi, what's your name? You're going to put your first name in there. And then it's going to say, oh, great, what's your email address? You're going to put that in there. And then it's going to send you the literal link on your phone, no email crap to go through. It's gonna, and you just push on that, and it'll take you to the website, and, and you can watch this presentation. It's a video of this presentation. Isn't that cool? All right, so if you miss something, you can watch it over and over and over. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how I put my offers in. But first, I'm going to teach you how most everybody does it right now. So you can see what before and after looks like. Is that fair? Yeah. All right. <coughs> Typically, and, and this is what a lot of the uh, seminars teach. So. If, if, you know, you can watch the news or the, the, the radio station or listen to the radio stations and, and you can hear when the seminars are coming through in town, you know, because Stan gets on there and says, hey, I'm looking for a team in your area, right? Have you ever heard that commercial? Just a new. And they play that in every area. <laughs> they all do that. That's called marketing, right? It's smart. So what happens is, is the real estate agents who do foreclosure properties know when all the gurus come through because they're going to get 50 or 60 offers on every house, all the same, right? And they're going to look like this. It's going to be an all-cash offer, no contingencies, somewhere around 40 to 50% of market value. Not 40% to market value. They're not offering 50, 60%. They're offering 40 to 50%, which, you know, is going to go where? Right? Yeah, it's going to make that, that noise and when it hits the trash can or the delete button nowadays. Uh, as is, where is, with any and all defaults or defects, whatever you want to say. If you're an attorney, you're going to say defects, right? Because the house doesn't have defaults. It has defects, right? And the, this contract is assignable. Why do they teach them how to do assignable contracts? 
because they just took them for $40,000. They don't have any money to put down in earnest money or anything. Oop, did I say that out loud? <laughs> right? But you know what? If you buy the program of $40,000, we'll teach you how to do an assignable contract. And where's my realtors? How many of you will accept an assignable contract? None. Right? None. But see, when you're sitting in that audience, you don't know that, right? You don't know what you don't know. Okay? And uh, due diligence of as much time as possible because, yeah, all you got to do is get it under contract with an assignable contract, and then you need as much time as you can to sell the contract to somebody else. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it can be done, yeah. but not like that. No. Because the agent is going to just slam you down, right? Uh, and you're not even getting a phone call back. Uh, closing in 30 days, extend it out as long as possible. Why? To give you more chances to do that. But see, they're pumping you full of footballs when they're saying all of this because they're trying to get you for what? Repeat training. Repeat training, 40000 bucks. Right. The first day they teach you how to get money on your credit card so that you can buy houses with a credit card. And then the next day, they ask everybody, how much did you get extra? Because they teach you how to do an exercise to go and raise your credit limits. And then, you know, they have people in the back of the room at the seminars, and they're sitting back there, and they say, okay, who got $10,000? And everybody raises their hands. Who got $20,000? And they all raise their hands. Who got forty dollars or $50,000? And, and the ones that got their hands raised, they've now been selected. <laughs> you ever hear that term? <laughs> oh, you know, we've been watching you through this whole seminar. And we really think you've got what it takes. <laughs> You're never going to look at a real estate seminar the same way. And I don't care. Because I'm money baby. So, <clears throat> earnest money deposit delivered in three days. The effective day, $100 to $1,000. Because they don't have any money. You know, legally, it's $100. It, it's called... Um, consideration. Consideration, thank you. It... it it's all it is is the most of the laws were were written in the 1800s because you had to have some sort of value transferred to make it a binding contract. That's it. So why did why do realtors need three, four, five, six percent or a dollar amount? Because that's what their broker told them to do. They don't know, right? Not that all real estate agents don't know what they're doing, but they're just doing what they're told, right? Kind of like at Circuit City. I missed that store. Gosh. Right? So, typical offer. Anybody ever write an offer similar to this? Yeah. yeah. All the time. you got to be different. If there's 50 or 60 offers and they all write them like this, why the hell would they call you? You have to be different. So I learned this a long time ago because I went out and I raised capital and I, and I had the money sitting in escrow. I borrowed $2 million dollars from two guys from, from New York. I'll stop right there. Okay. <laughs> they weren't in the mob. The, uh, the one guy had a dry cleaning uh, plant in Manhattan, and he was retired. And the other guy had a, he was retired too, but his family had a Italian restaurant supply business. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But I made my payments on time. Every time. <laughs> See, because I got my knees. Anyways, I went out and I borrowed $2 million at 12% interest rate and no points with a two-year term. And that's how I made my money. And I can show you how to do that too. Now, if you're different, I was different because I had the money in the bank. But so did a lot of other people. So I had to hone my offer to be something really special, right? I want them to do what? Call you. To do what? To negotiate. Okay? Because nobody negotiates. You go to, you go to uh, Nordstrom's, you pick out a thing, and then you go to the register and you pay whatever they tell you to pay. Nobody negotiates anymore. And that's fun. So here's what I do. We're going to restructure the purchase agreement. I'm going to do an all-cash offer. No contingencies means there's no lender requirements on the money. Do you know what that means? Do I need to explain that? Please. Okay, uh, if I go and get a loan from a mortgage company, I have to do an appraisal. I have to get a certain uh, credit score. I have to uh, have so much money in the bank for so much time, I can't pull it out of the mattress. Those are contingencies on the loan of my ability to receive the money for the payment of that, or, or for the money for that loan to make the purchase amount. So there's none of those contingencies because it's really all cash. What if you don't have the cash? Lie. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> you find somebody that does, and I, and I actually teach how to do that. So I didn't have the money. I went. You know, was, honestly, the guy that I borrowed the money from, the, the $2 million, was a guy named Nick. I met him at McDonald's. Now it would be Starbucks. But McDonald's was where you got coffee in the morning. And he was stealing the creamers and the sugars. <laughs> Because he had one of those photography vests, oh and he was God. filling them up, I swear to God. And what happened was, I looked at him and said, what the hell are you doing? And he says, I'm taking the creamers and the sugars. And I says, well, how many do you need? And he's like, well, I'm taking them home. And I says, well, I think they put them out for your coffee. He says, well, I drink coffee at home, too. And I says, I don't think they put it out for you to drink and take to home. He says, show me the sign where it says that. And I was like, oh, this guy's smart. So I ended up having coffee with him, and he did. He had a, a, a dry cleaning plant in New York, and he retired. I got some really good uh, jokes, by the way. Uh, but he retired, and when, as soon as he retired and moved down, they sold the plant, they moved down, and the, him and his wife are enjoying life. She died. So he was like all by himself sewing for all the neighbors because you know he sewed a lot <laughs> and uh, uh, he had about I'd say somewhere around 20 million dollars oh, and he lived like he was poor but he liked doing pool loans and, and he so I started doing hard money pool loans for him and then I one day woke up and said geez why don't you just give me two million dollars because he hated going to closings oh, I don't want to go to closing I said yeah but you like that money he says yeah can't you just send me the money I said you got to go to closing. So I figured it out. I said, look, Nick, you don't have to go anymore. Just sign this paper. Give me $2 million, and I'll send you a check every month, and you don't even have to go to the closing. He says, deal. $2 million, bucks, 10%, two-year term. I paid the first three months out of the principal. <laughs> but then I start rolling, and it, it was just it was disgustingly great. So uh, as is, where is, that stays the same. I write on there, in the contract, in the special provisions area, this contract is not assignable. What does that tell the real estate agent? What does that tell you? You're serious. I'm serious. You're the buyer. I'm the buyer. I'm not going to try to wholesale this deal. I'm going to wholesale this deal. <clears throat> but they don't know that yet. So is that lying if you don't tell them something? No. Omission? Well, you're starting no. off that way. No. How? That's not a lie. It's not a lie. No. no. So yeah. You yeah, I did. I did. Just like that. Due diligence period of two days. Is that fast? Okay. If you're a cash buyer, why do you need all this time? If you're a serious real estate investor, you don't need 10, 15 days to do your due diligence. You should know before you even put the offer in whether you're going to do the deal or not. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I can buy them sight unseen without ever looking at them as long as I know what the math is. If the math works, it works. Okay? Uh, but but I'll, I'll verify that first. <laughs> I got two days. Now, closing is going to be in five days. Is that serious? Yeah. You know what they say to me is that we can't close in five days. I says, that's okay. I can. I'm just waiting on you. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. Let's go. Right? Turn the table. That's a huge, huge, huge difference. Because when I walk in, I say, I'm going to pay cash. You know, everybody pays cash. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, but I'm ready to go in five days. And they're like, whoa, wait a minute. We can't even do the paperwork in five days. The title company can't even do it that fast. Well, that's okay. I can. I'm waiting on you. And see, I'm still BS with them because I don't have the money. Right? Because she has the money. And when I get the deal, I'm going to go to her and wholesale it to her. Because she said, bring me all the deals you can get at this parameter. Okay? So that's what you do. I just did it backwards. I knew what that guy wanted at the table, at the closing table. I just had to work the numbers backwards to where I could make a little bit of money too. And that's how I created this. Earnest money will be deposited three days after the effective date for the full contract amount. So if it's a $150,000 property, I'm going to pay how much for it? Well, let's make it easy. If it's a, a $200,000 house, what's my offer? Hmm? 6000 no, 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 no. If I'm going to buy the house is worth, all fixed up, ARV, is worth $200,000. I'm going to offer $100,000. How much earnest money am I going to put up? $100,000. All of it. All of it. Yeah, see, that's Mr. Realtor talking. 6%, 3%, right? No, 3%. 6%, 3%. 
So that's okay. But if I walk in, I'm going to close in, in five days, due diligence of tw uh, 48 hours, two days. It's not assignable, and I'm giving you all the money for the entire amount of the contract. Right? Is that serious? Yeah. They're going to call me, aren't they? Oh, yeah. But they're going to be mad. Why? Right there. So their agent is going to call your agent and say, hey, we really like your offer, but we need you to come up any. Do you think you can get your seller or your buyer to come up? Sure. Give us a counter, and we'll see if we can put it together. I know they'll pay more. That's what you have to train your agent to say. And then that agent will do what? Counter offer you. What happens when an agent counters your offer? It's, it's what? It's gone. It's gone? What'd you say? It's a new day. It's a new day? Anybody disagree with that? Your offer's not valid. Bam, it's done. It's gone. Right? That thing does not exist anymore. And then we do this. We change it back to the standard contract terms. Right? So uh, they sent it over and it just had the, the numbers change, right? They, they probably countered me down maybe $10,000, right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to leave that the same. I'm going to leave that the same. I'm going to scratch out the word not and make the contract assignable. That, that's going to make them, they, their heads pop off when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, due diligence, I'm going to change the two days to 17 days because we're in California. Right, 17 days here. Uh, I'm going to cross out the five days. You know this is all done digitally now, but I'm just you understand what I'm saying. Uh, 30 days. I'm going to I'm going to change it from the five days to 30 days. Right? Can you can you can you start to hear the steam boiling over on the other line? And then we're going to change that hundred thousand dollars. We're going to cross out some zeros and we're going to make it a thousand bucks. And they're going to call and do what? Scream. Scream. What are you doing? Realtors never cuss once uh, amongst each other, right? Yes, never, never, never. That's a lie. But <clears throat> what happens is, I'm on the phone, aren't I? Well, my agent is. It used to be me. I, I always talk in the first tense because it used to be me answering the phone, right? Because I was the I, I I I was the owner of the mortgage or the mortgage company and the the real estate office, so I could answer that. I didn't have to be a broker. They didn't have to know. It was, uh, we were buying in a corporate name anyways. So what would happen is, is you start negotiating this stuff back to what, you know, oh, you, you said you didn't want that other offer, so this is what we're going to do. And they said, but your offer was blah, blah, blah. I'd say, well, if you want to go back to that, we can do that right now. Get your buyer or get your seller to sign the docs, and we'll go back to that original offer. We can do that. Can anybody in this room, if I give you a $200,000 house, and I can get it to you for $100,000, and it needs maybe $25,000 in repairs. Who can come up with that $100,000 in the next day? Okay, in the next 20 minutes. Okay, you see that? Now, if you did not raise your hand, you should have been looking around the room to see who you can wholesale houses to. Right? Okay. Hey, I was... I was born at night, it wasn't last night. And when I sat in the seminar room in the back of the room every once in a while when I used to go out and the people raised their hands and said that they could get the money like that, I was writing their names down. Why? I need some of that money. Because if one of my other students said, hey, I've got this deal, I don't know what to do with it, I could put those people together. And make a little bit of money. Okay. So what happens is, is they're going to say, hey, you put $100,000, now you've got $1,000. And the question that you have to train your agents to say is, what do you want? Well, you had $100,000, we want $20,000. Not a problem. We've got $1,000 there. At the end of the due diligence period, we'll just give you another $19,000. That's not a problem. Is that okay? Go get your seller to sign on that and we'll write it up today. Come on, hurry up, let's go, chop chop. I got a Beamer payment. <laughs> That's your agent saying that, right? Because all agents drive Beamers, right? Or Cadillacs, or Lexuses, <laughs> right? You know the average income for a real estate agent is $54,000 on the national scale. <laughs> not very good, but not here in California because we all make millions of dollars. Now, 
then they're going to say, oh, by the way, that due diligence period of 15 days, we can't do that. Well, what do you want? Well, we want 10 days. Well, I know I can't do 10 days, but I'm pretty sure I can go back to my buyer and I'm, I, I know for sure, you know what, I know for sure, just write it up for 11 days. I know we can do 11 days. That's the standard. Right? It's always got to negotiate, right? We can't close in five days. I already told you that one. <laughs> right? Well, we can. We're just waiting on you. What do you want? We want 30 days. So they say 30 days. And then they go to this one. And this is the one where they squeal. Literally make squealing noises like piggies at a farm. <laughs> we cannot do an assignable contract. And that's not a problem. Why? Was anybody here while Randy Hughes was here? Yes. Okay. Randy Hughes changed my life with the land trust. Because I buy everything with a land trust. Even in California. Okay? There's ways to do it. I'm not going to tell you up here, but I can tell you how to do it. But I don't care if it's assignable or not. If I'm buying it in a trust or a land trust or whatever you want to call it, whatever your title company demands that you call it, whatever, I'm going to assign my beneficial interest to Linda for the $10,000 on that deal that we were, you know, the fake deal that we were talking about. So she's going to give me $110,000, let's say, for that $200,000 house. And she's going to bring $110,000 to closing. And the title company is going to freak out because it's what? $10,000 over. Anybody work at a title company? Anybody ever work with a title company? Anybody ever buy a house with a mortgage? Okay. <laughs> Do you know what a mortgage is? Closing instructions for the title company on how to transact that transaction. They're called closing instructions. There's a sheet that says closing instructions. All of this stuff has to be done in order for this deal to be funded. So I send the title company closing instructions on that extra $10,000. I also have a letter from her authorizing me to use the $100,000 to do the acquisition because I'm using her money. And at closing, I'm going to simultaneously assign my beneficial interest to her for guess how much? $10,000, $10, which is paid outside of closing. Anybody know the significance of that? So the sellers don't see it. Nobody sees it. Yeah. Nobody. Mm. Now, IRS is going to know that you made that money because she's going to report that she gave it to me. So make sure you report it on your taxes. They know everything anyways. They they're listening to us right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what happens? What happens? Some of them, some of them will work. Some of them won't. What do you do with the ones that don't work? Move on. No. You call them in ten days. If hey, you know what? You didn't put that. We didn't get to put that deal together. And I think you said you had another offer on it. Is that going to close? Did, 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 did you get another offer on it? And they said, well, you know, I'm a real estate agent. I can't tell you anything about them. I said, yeah, I know. But it, it, let's just say if you weren't a real estate agent and you had no idea about that deal and you knew if it was going to close or not, is it going to close? And you're like, you know, you just asked me the same question. I says, okay, let's say in hypothetical world, that deal, which really is a deal, but let's pretend it's a different deal. Would you think that pretend deal would go to closing? And they're going to say, well, probably or probably not. Just keep asking until they say, I'm not going to answer your questions and they hang up. Because they'll give you the answer. Do you, do you guys know that? Usually you ask somebody three times, they'll, they'll break down. That's why they put you in a room when you did something wrong. Not that I know about this. I see it on TV. And they just keep grilling you the same questions over and over. Why? They know what you're going to say, but they just know that after a certain amount of time, you're going to wear thin and you're just going to say, all right, I don't want the questions anymore. I did do it. Whatever it was. What did I do? You know? Oh, well, sign this piece of paper that says everything you did. And they sign it. Why? To get out of that room. So just remember, I play a lot of psychological tricks and games on people. And it's okay, because they allow you to. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Who thinks this strategy can create more deals? Yeah? Isn't that pretty cool? So, geez, I got it wrong on every stupid slide. <laughs> That's okay, I can fix that. All right, now I'm going to give you a little super bonus. Did anybody think that that was not cool? Yeah, it was cool. Very cool. I, I bought over, gosh, well, about 1,500 properties that way, and that's not including my students' deals. 
So I've done more than 14. But I was there. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I was there. You're me in the future. Or I'm you in the future. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely the most important thing. And I will be honest with you, you need to write this down. Because this is the one stupid thing almost all my students don't put on the contract and it screws you every time that you don't have it on your contract. Okay? All contract contingencies and time frames commence upon buyer's receipt of all fully executed contract and all addendums. Well, and can I say something here? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Takes my business partner. This, I, I wanted to uh, make this because this is important. And I'll tell you something that's at least as important, which is what I'm going to tell you now. Not only do students typically, for some reason, fail to put this in the purchase agreement, but realtors that the students retain to work for them do not put that in there. And They'll say, oh, you don't need that. It's already in the contract. No, they, well, they, uh, and, and, and let me tell you something. And I'm going to give a nod to our young friend here who said that you have to be the expert. Yep. Don't kid yourself about these other people. They don't know what you know. I know I'm getting a little excited. I'm getting my Irish out. But we <laughs> see this all the time, don't we, Cliff? Last week. We see it. Black, thank you. Yeah. And it happens all the time. And, and it so took don't a, rely on a realtor for this. Because that wasn't in there, it turned a good deal into a bad deal. Mm -hmm. and, and the guy lost the opportunity of making almost $40,000. That's right. Had to kick it to the curb because that wasn't in there. Why, why, why is that important? Okay. So if you've ever done a deal, you know that as soon as they uh, get an accept, accepted idea that they're going to take your deal, that agent calls your agent and says, hey, we're going to take your deal, right? There hasn't been any signatures or any paperwork done. It's just that agent is so excited, they call the other agent and say, hey, you've got a deal. We're, we're, we're good to go. And then everybody starts jumping on this bandwagon of putting stuff together, getting closing ready, right? They call the title company. They order appraisals. They order inspections. They do all of this stuff. Whatever that stuff is that they do, the transactional coordinator is going to be calling you and saying, hey, we need this, 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 and this, right? And what happens is, until I see a piece of paper with wet ink on the other side, which would be the seller's side, I'm from Missouri. Show me state. <laughs> right? Missouri is a show me state. I know they don't teach that in school anymore. But my son is homeschooled, so he knows all this. <laughs> Now, uh, and, and I can totally, I, 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 my heart bleeds for my son because he's, he's introverted too. But he has a real estate speaker dad that talks to everybody. I'm like, Christopher, you can't just go up and talk to everybody. And he's like, why? You do it. Uh, so it's confusing too. But uh, what this does is this allows you to gain control over the entire situation. You completely control that contract. Because what they're going to do is they're going to say, hey, we've got a deal. I'm going to say, hey, you're a liar. I don't believe you. Right? And they're going to be like, no, no, no. I just got off the phone with the agent. Well, she's a liar too. Or it's a he. And they're going to be like, what do you mean? I said, I don't believe you until I see it in writing. Because everything else is BS. And that's the truth. It is. Okay? So they're going to say, oh, by the way, I need to get that earnest money. I'm like, no, you don't. I don't even have a signed contract yet. Well, they did say they were going to take it. Oh, we're going to go through this again? I don't believe you. You see what I just did? So, how long does it take to get the seller's signatures on a signed contract in a foreclosure transaction from a bank? A long time. About seven to eight days, nine days, somewhere around in there. So, if I've got three days to come up with the earnest money, how many days do I have now? Ten. Ten, eleven, twelve, whatever that adds up to. That's pretty cool. That's worth that right there. And then they're going to come back to you and they're going to say, okay, here's the signed contract. And they're going to hand you an addendum that's not signed by them because it's the standard addendum that every bank does. I'm like, well, that's not standard to me. I've got a signed contract. I don't need to sign that. Why would you ever, ever, with a signed contract, sign a blank addendum because the bank requires it? 
Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Huh? Dangerous. I mean, they could write in anything. Well, yeah. And that's what they do. Okay. So when you buy a foreclosure from a bank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, any FHA, VA, or any, any institutional organization, they're going to <clears throat> accept the contract, but you have to fill out this addendum. And it says, everything in your contract is void because we're overruling it in this addendum. You know, I mean, it's like 17 pages, too. It could be.